Are you a nursing student that wants to cut your study time by over 60%? Well, you can head over to simplenursing.com forward slash YouTube and sign up for free. Hey, nursing students. Today, we're exploring two contrasting endocrine disorders, Addison disease and Cushing syndrome. These conditions involve dysregulation of steroid hormones, which can have significant impacts on various bodily functions. So understanding these disorders is vital to providing comprehensive care for your patients. Now, before getting started, you can head to the link in the description to access this blog with more information and free practice questions to test your knowledge. Now, let's get started. First, with Addison's disease. Simply think we need to add more steroids with Addison's disease. This is a condition characterized by underproduction of hormones in the adrenal glands, specifically steroids. The primary causes of Addison's disease include autoimmune disorders, infections, cancer, or even physical trauma to the adrenal or pituitary glands. Signs and symptoms of Addison's disease can be diverse, including reduced blood pressure, blood sugar, even salt, and water retention. Also, weight loss, fatigue, and muscle aches, as well as intolerance to cold, abnormal skin pigmentation, and irregular menstrual cycles, and decreased libido. So simply think, with Addison's, we have to add more steroids. These clients look skinny, frail, and hairless with hyperpigmentation. Basically, their skin looks like it has a tan. Now, let's dive into the pathophysiology. Hyponatremia, which is fancy words for low sodium, sodium less than 135. Clients with Addison's experience this hyponatremia as a result of increased excretion of sodium and water from the body and into the body. In addition, clients are at increased risk for attaining excess potassium, leading to deadly hyperkalemia, that high potassium over 5.0. Remember, potassium pumps the heart. So with high potassium, this leads to high pumps in the heart, leading to deadly dysrhythmias. Now, hyperkalemia can also cause an increase in hypoglycemia, that low sugar. And remember, hypogly, the brain might die, as well as hypotension, that low blood pressure. Another manifestation is eosinophilia, where a sinophil count is over 500. Now, it's a possible manifestation in clients with adrenal insufficiency, but is not an accurate predictor of the diagnosis of Addison's. Now, moving on to treatment and nursing interventions. This includes steroid replacement. Simply think, we have to add steroids with Addison's. Medications include prednisone, hydrocodone, and fludrocodone. So simply think, steroids end in zones. We should also monitor for Addisonian crisis with acute adrenal insufficiency and managing it with fluids and steroids. So again, we add steroids with Addison's to prevent this adrenal crisis. We need to also closely monitor vital signs, electrolytes, specifically that sodium, and blood sugar and daily weights. And lastly is psychological support and screening for depression. Now let's discuss Cushing syndrome, which is basically the opposite of Addison's disease. We have way too much steroids inside the body. So think that the body puffs up with a big cushion of steroids with Cushing syndrome, often caused by tumors on the adrenal or pituitary glands, or even by external factors like overuse of steroids. Now for signs and symptoms of Cushing syndrome, these include weight gain, often with a moon face, and buffalo hump, two key terms that love to come up on exams. Also skin changes like stretch marks and excessive hair growth weakness and fatigue, and even muscle wasting, as well as menstrual irregularities and reduced fertility. Now, here's two big ones. Hypertension, that high blood pressure, and hyperglycemia, that high sugar, as well as immune suppression. So simply think, over 140, the heart says, oh lordy, clients with elevated blood pressure may require therapeutic intervention to reduce cardiovascular risks. Now, moving on to treatment overview for Cushing syndrome. This includes addressing underlying causes, including tumor removal, or even tapering off exogenous steroids. Fancy words for bringing down the dose of steroids, and even medications to decrease cortisol production. Remember, cortisol is a steroid produced by the adrenals. These medications include ketoconazole, metiroprone, and etomidate. We should also monitor electrolytes, blood glucose, and weight changes, as well as screening for osteoporosis, where we get porous, brittle bones, and even cataracts inside the eyes. While Addison's disease and Cushing syndrome are complete opposites in terms of steroid production, they both require careful management and monitor. Addison's disease is treating the steroid replacement therapy, 
where you have to add some steroids with Addison's. While Cushing syndrome often involves addressing the underlying cause and reducing cortisol levels. As a nursing student, it's essential to understand the signs and symptoms and pathophysiology of these conditions in order to provide appropriate care. And remember, early detection and prompt treatment can significantly improve the quality of life for patients with both conditions. Remember, effective communication and patient education are crucial to managing these endocrine disorders. Empowering patients with knowledge about their condition can lead to better outcomes and improved adherence. So that's it for today's video on Addison's and Cushing's syndrome. Stay tuned for more informative videos and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for regular updates on nursing topics and for the practice questions you see here, click the link in the description. Looking to cut your study time in half? Head on over to simplenursing.com forward slash YouTube. You can sign up for free and get access to all of this.